I made a move to Nashville years ago and became a member of the Grand Ole Opry. And I think that was, uh, that was the biggest boost for me, you know, and eventually got my own record label. And... Taking my band and playing with uh, jam bands and and just about any combination of things, you know, really we did. We played the Fillmore West one time and the guy told me that runs the place, he said, you know the last bluegrass band we had in here? And I said, no. He said it was Flat and Scruggs right after they did the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> I've never known the uh, the recipe for success, you know. Just I always done what I wanted to do, and if people didn't like it, you know, that's okay because I know there's a lot of things I don't like either. <laughs> How I hate those sugar. Our home base in New Orleans. It's interesting because it's so small. It's uh, you know, it's it's actually feels like it's the opposite of this. You know, Preservation Hall is very intimate. It's like 70 people. And, uh, and that's actually where we first met Mr. McCurry and his sons was down at Preservation Hall. And uh, the amazing thing about playing to, to large audiences and taking the music all over the world is you, every audience you play for, you realize there's something that they all share in common, no matter where you go in the world, that everybody has an appreciation for, for expression and for, for great music and for great entertainment. I think that's something that that, that, that that we all share in common, you know, Preservation Hall and, 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 and the McCurries. It, it had never really occurred to me before we got together and recorded to ever pair bluegrass music and New Orleans jazz together. I, I never, it never was something that never really crossed my mind. It's such an amazing experience. Yeah, I went and played the tuba with them on, on the Opry one night, and uh, and we just started we started um, doing some shows together and seeing what the you know what if there was anything that would happen musically organically together. And the more we both learned about each other's music, the more we realized that we really weren't six degrees of separation. We were we were even less than one degree of separation. A lot of our repertoire, unbeknownst to either of us, overlapped quite a bit. Uh, a lot of our spirituals and, and gospel and church music overlaps, and a lot of our uh, a lot of uh, traditional New Orleans jazz songs. And the more we got together and played, we realized that, you know, we were really just basically doing the same thing. Uh, and, you know, we, we've had so many conversations about it. It's, it's really unbelievable to me that this is really the first time that anybody's ever brought, uh, made an effort to really explore, not just do it one time, but to really explore and record and tour and perform together and really push each other uh, musically. After getting to know the McCurry family, it's important. Uh, legacy and family and tradition are, are important to them, and it was very important to my father. My father was in, in the Preservation Hall band before me, and he was uh, one of the, the founders of Preservation Hall. And in New Orleans, music tradition is very important to us. Our, 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 our history and our cultural traditions are very important to us. Our way of life is very important to us, and we, we protect it uh, you know, with, with really with every day of our lives we go out to to do things to promote it and protect it and preserve it <laughs> <laughs> 